Let's take a look at the different layers of organization you can apply to your session when producing and mixing. I'm using the PreSonus Studio One for this tutorial because it has a killer set of features when it comes to organizing and setting up your session. You can set things up exactly the way you like. The project I'm using is included in the tutorial files. Although this tutorial is somewhat specific to Studio One, you can take many of the ideas and adapt them to whichever DAW software you're using. In the tutorial files I have also included a version of this project for Ableton Live. Live doesn't offer quite the same level of organization as Studio One, so live users will have to make do with less. Naming tracks properly is super important. I try to come up with names that are short, descriptive and different enough from each other. You want to be able to identify them with a quick glance. I don't really worry about naming the individual elements inside the arrangement, unless I'm working with loads of vocals or other live takes. Micromanaging is not the point, effortless workflow is. Here is my way of arranging tracks from left to right in the mixer, or top to bottom in the arrangement. Main drums first, then percussion, bass, synths, any other sounds, send effects, submix buses, mix bus. This basic order is always the same with every project I do. If I'm working with vocals, guitars, or something more unusual, I just adapt on the fly. Everything in my mix, including the sound effects, is routed through one of the submix buses before hitting the main mix bus. This gives me another possible stage for processing and makes the session easier to control as a well. whole. It also makes printing mix stems very straightforward. Most of the time I end up with 5 to 7 submix buses per session, depending on the project. Grouping mixer and edit function is very useful, especially when working with many vocal or other live recorded tracks. In Studio One I like to use the VZA faders for controlling groups of volume faders. I can then set up separate mix groups to control smaller groups of tracks within a single VCA group. I have done that here with the bass drum and snare tracks. Color coding is an extremely helpful way to boost the level of organization in your project. It becomes increasingly more powerful as your track count goes up. There are different ways to utilize color coding. I like to use colors to reflect the output routing of my channels. All drums are grey, all sense effects are yellow, all submix buses are red, and so on. Console scenes in Studio One are used to control which channels are shown and hidden. In this project I have two scenes set up, all and buses. I don't normally use scenes with smaller projects like this one, it's a great feature however with large sessions or when working with small computer screens. You can link scenes to show and hide arranged tracks as well. Markers are extremely handy, not only for giving visual structure to your project, but also quickly navigating around the session. Whatever door you happen to be using, please do make sure to learn the keyboard shortcuts for jumping back and forth between markers. It is exactly as simple as it sounds, but has to be one of the most practical workflow enhancements I know. The Arranger track in Studio One is a very special tool. It allows you to work with entire sections of your song as if they were individual elements. You simply draw the parts of your arrangement as blocks on the Arranger track and name them. You can then move these blocks around as you wish, and everything in the actual arrange window will follow. It's very handy.
I have always explored alternative arrange ideas by building them in the empty space at the end of the project timeline. In Studio One there is a better way, scratch pads. They are secondary arrange pages that you can pull out to try different ideas. Copy your entire arrangement if you want, then experiment to your heart's content while keeping your main arrange nice and clean. As your project progresses, it's easy for things to get messy. Rightfully so, there's surely a time and place for just being creative without having to worry about anything else. Just make sure to tidy up afterwards. Remove unused elements, tracks and plugins from your project. Check that your group assignments and routings are correct. This ensures a smooth workflow as you move forward.